cool. Great to see you here, everybody. We're here at the webinar. Where we're going to talk about. My name is Walter Peters, by the way. If you haven't been to one of our sessions before, um, or you haven't read the book Naked Forex, I'll tell you a little bit about what Naked Forex is all about. So, what it is, it's about trading price action without indicators, usually support and resistance levels. Sometimes I use trend lines, but essentially, it's a very simple approach. And today, you're in luck because we're going to talk about how to tell a retracement move versus a trend move. We're going to talk about bear traps and bull traps, what they look like, what to look out for. We'll talk about the best trend indicator I've ever come across. And we'll show you how to draw your support resistance zones using some weird chart that it's almost been forgotten. It seems like nobody ever uses these charts, but they come in really handy when you're looking to draw your zones in. So let's do it. Uh, and in the Naked Forks book, I talk a lot about the trading systems that I use. Um, they've actually evolved since I wrote the book. So there will be ones probably that we talked about today that weren't even in the book. So you should be so lucky. <laughs> So let's, so let's get started, shall we? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about, uh, this is the Aussie CAD. I just picked a random pair. I think because there's a trade on right now, actually. I think that's why I picked the Aussie CAD because there's a potential trade on and I wanted to, uh, you know, show you one that we can talk about. Also, oh yeah, at the, at the end of my uh, rabbiting on today, if you have any charts that you want to take a look at from a naked point of view, go ahead send them to me and I'll uh, I'll pull them up for you okay all right so let's get moving welcome Craig great to see you here so <clears throat> what happens here is I uh, will go to the weekly so let's say I'm gonna trade the Aussie CAD daily I'll go to the higher time frame the weekly chart and I go to the line chart so you, it doesn't matter if you're using trading view or trade station or ninja or whatever you use I use MetaTrader but uh, and mostly the main reason I use MetaTrader is just because I'm used to it. Just used to like the perspective of MetaTrader more than anything else. Nothing magic about it really. I used to use TradeStation. I used to use NinjaTrader in fact when NinjaTrader was kind of new I think. I used to use TradeStation over 10 years ago. So I've used a lot of charting packages and it doesn't really matter but most of them are going to give you this opportunity to select a line chart and once you do what I'm looking for are those spots on the chart where we have both support and resistance? Support here, resistance here. So there's the same area where we had resistance, we had support. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. And then what I'll do after I do that in the higher time frame, I'll drop down to the lower time frame. Just kind of make sure that there aren't any obvious ones I missed, like obviously this one I missed. Sometimes you're going to find, well, often. You'll, you'll usually get about 80% of them on the higher time frame, and then you'll need to pull in a few more on the, on the, you know, the time frame that you're trading. So, let's see here. Do we have any, any over here? I think. Potentially, we have a few more. And then this one will be good to go, I think. Yep. I think that's about it. Eh, looks like there's one more. Cool. So that is the Aussie CAD. Now, uh, um, we can talk about the trade on the Aussie CAD. It actually looks better on the 12 hour chart. So I'll, I'll pull up the 12 hour chart later and I'll show you this trade. It's uh, not as. No, sorry, not the 12 hour chart. It's the two day chart. I think I think it's the two day chart. Anyway, um, it looks a lot better, I think, on the two day chart. Yeah, it's the two day chart, actually, the one that I'm looking at uh, on this pair. So anyway, let's let's. Uh, so that's basically how I draw my support and resistance levels. Now, a couple of hints that I found. First of all, is that these are not walls on the chart. They're beer bellies. Beer bellies not walls. What I mean by that is I don't ex see how the market came down here and it did this little thing right here. Like I don't expect that the market's going to fall from 
this pseudo kangaroo tail here at 102.30 and come all the way down here and just bounce and rebound hard. Like, you know, sometimes you'll get these little fake outs. So what that means is sometimes the market pushes into a support and resistance level and it's actually a beer belly. It kind of pushes into it and then it, 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 it's rejected. Uh, sometimes it'll just barely touch it like this right here and and also you know fall away as well so it's it's not perfect there there are zones they're not specific points on the chart here's another one see how it kind of wicked into it that's very common see right here it kind of went a little bit pushed a little bit hard and then fell so that's very very common that you will sometimes get it where it just just kind of whispers into the level like just kind of wicks right into there and just kind of just brushes up against it and other times you'll get where the market actually just pushes into it hard through it and then is rejected like it did there. So that's totally normal. What's more important really, and this is what we're going to talk about today, is what the market does when it gets there. That's really, hey Steven, that's really the important thing. And that's kind of going to be uh, our clue is what does the market do when it gets there? Okay, so... Let's talk about um, uh, probably the, the first thing I want to talk about is retracement versus trend, okay? And probably for this, our friendly Swissy chart will be most useful. So let's bring up our Swissy chart and let's go down to a lower time frame like the, uh, actually this is a really bad chart simply because of this candle right here. Normally you don't have this kind of mucking up your chart, but okay, that's okay. That's okay, I'll still, I'll still do this chart just because um, as we'll see when we go to the trend indicator, this is a very, very strong trend. So it's, boy, it's not ideal though. You know what? I might what I might do is just peel back on this one and go to a different trend. Here's one actually. So, um, all right. So let's say that we we were watching this market and it was making moves down, and it was doing kind of what we expected it to do, which is it was making strong moves down, and then it was making these little retracement moves. Now, what you'll notice um, is that when the market's trending, the trend candles will be bigger and they will cover more ground. So for example, in this case right here, actually let me zoom in because I know for, for some of you like, it's hard to see this on the webinar. I know I understand that. So let me, let me uh, zoom in a bit. It's a little bit easier for you to see. So like this move right here, these trend candles, how many of them are, are there? There's four candles and they covered 94 pips, four four hour candles, and they fell 94 pips. Then we have three retracement candles, these three right here, and you know they retraced 23 pips. <laughs> and that's pretty that's pretty consistent with the trend, right? So whenever I see uh, big candles moving in one direction and then it either goes flat like it did here or it retraces against the trend like it does does here with these little that i've captured that with these little trend lines you know when that happens that's usually a pretty good sign that you're in a trend the the trend candles will go further they're bigger and the retracement candles that often alternate too just like this one actually you get i've got a blue bullish candle and then i've got an orange bearish candle, a blue bullish candle, an orange bearish candle, and so forth. And it's same thing here, blue, orange, blue, blue, orange, blue, 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 orange, orange. You know, it, it's a lot of that going on. They get wicky often. But here's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Often toward the end of your retracement move, you'll get what's called a bull trap or a bear trap. Now, Usually this candle is big and it's enticing, okay? And I'll show you one actually that we had 
on another chart as well um, this week. Actually, it was today. Uh, so it's, it's fortuitous that we're here today. But look at this. This candle right here is a, what we call a belt. So the, the market closed up here, then it, it gapped lower. It opened up down here, and then it went up there and almost closed on the high. Pretty bullish. So if you would have seen this, you might be thinking, hey, you know, the market's going to keep bouncing off this trend line. In fact, maybe we're going to take out this high over here on the last retracement. This is a pretty strong signal that, hey, it's going to go, you know, the market's going to go strong, you know, long here. It's time to go long. Well, it wasn't time to go long, and of course, it fell through that trend line, and the, the trend continued with this these two trend candles right here. Then it retraced again, and it fell, retraced again, and it fell, and so forth. But a lot of times, um, the last candle, or near near the end of the retracement, is that's when you get the most impressive candle that looks like, you know what, this could really, you know, this could really go for me. Let me give you an example of one on the uh, the Euro Kiwi. It actually looks a lot better on the 12 hour chart, but uh, I don't wanna switch over to my 12 hour charts because it just kind of strains the processor, especially when I'm doing a webinar. So anyway, um, the point is, uh, this is what we would call like a, um, a trend line, like a, a reverse drop trade. So you get this trend line, it captures all these touches, right? The market's touch these, boom, 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 right? And then it comes up there and it, it hits right on our support and resistance level, this candle does, and it breaks through the trend line. Okay, so now what I wait for is I wait for the market to spend several candles outside the trend line, come back down and give me a hard bounce. And that hard bounce is actually right here, right there on the far right side of the chart there. That's the hard bounce. You put your buy stop just above the high. You can put your stop loss down here below the low down here. So that's looking like about 123 pips of risk or so. And you can see what happens on the next candle. The market does in fact trade higher right here. And so you're thinking, yes, I'm gonna target up here. I've got 122 pips of risk for 450 pips of reward. Awesome trade, right? Looking really good. It's better than three to one in terms of reward to risk ratio, better than three R. Looking really, really good. Almost four R, but not quite. Well, unfortunately, the market falls through the trend line right here. So this was a bull trap. So the market's been making lower lows and lower highs, and then it starts to look like it's actually now going to make, well, it did make a higher high. If you consider these highs over here and then these highs over here, it did make a higher high, but then it just fell right down, right through the right through the uh, trend line. And, and here we are now back down on support again. So why did it do that? And how, how, how did I know when I saw, even though I was pretty keen on this trade the last couple of days, how did I know not to take it and that it was likely to have some really strong downward pressure. Any any ideas? Does anybody have any idea? How would how can you possibly know that this was going to be a fake out trade? Like that this was going to do that? Because I almost took the trade, and then I checked my handy dandy trend indicator, and it showed me that it was a really bad idea. Any guesses? I'm just having a sip of my my tea here. Well, it turns out the handy dandy trend indicator did not fail me again. What I'm going to share with you here is the, this is the Euro Kiwi. Uh, I'll refresh it. You can find this on a lot of brokers like uh, Saxo Bank and Awanda. It's not just IG. Like I don't have any, you know, I've got no loyalties to brokers, guys. I don't, uh, so whatever, wherever you can find these data. This is updated, I think, every 10 minutes or so. I think it's 10 or 15 minutes. I can't remember. And um, so what I saw this morning w during the Asian session when I checked this trade was I saw that it said like 71% of the client accounts are long Euro Kiwi. And what did I want to do? I wanted to go long Euro Kiwi 
on this bounce right here, this bullish bounce. And so I said, whoa, 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 whoa. No way I'm going to take that trade. Here's why. We know that most retail traders go against the trend. We also know that most retail traders, and by the way, that's these data here, this, this is these are the retail traders, right? That's what these the traders who trade with IG markets, they're retail traders, right? Okay. So most traders go against the trend, and most traders take small profits and large losses. Even though they win more often than they lose, most retail traders take small. And we know this from studies of retail trades, like literally millions and millions of transactions. That's where these data come from. So they go against the trend and they take small profits and large losses, even though they usually, generally speaking, have a better than 50% win rate. They still lose. So I say to myself, self, if most of these guys are going long, guys and gals, right? Don't wanna be, gonna include the, the best traders are actually usually female traders, I've noticed. It's quite, quite common. So if most of our trader buddies are going against the trend and most of our trader buddies are going long Euro Kiwi, I definitely don't want to go long Euro Kiwi. This is like, so my rule is if 70% or, and it was 70% earlier today, I know it's come down. Why is it come down? Well, people have been getting stopped out, right? I mean, that, you know, that's what's going on. People are getting stopped out. So it, it was like 71 or something earlier today. It's now 68%. But when it gets to 70%, um, what that means to me is it's in a, it's it's got some really strong, it's got a strong bias. So if the chart is showing lower lows and lower highs and 71% of the traders are long that, that same chart, I know we're in a downtrend. Now, when we see these retracement moves where the market goes against the trend, I expect that number to come down a bit. It should come down a bit. Maybe it goes from 71 to 68 or 67 or whatever, but it shouldn't go to like 51. If it goes to 51, then it, that's just a neutral market. And the reason it goes down is they're, they're getting stopped out or they're, they're taking their small profits um, or they're taking their losses. So maybe like, for example, Let's say that you're a trader. Let's say that you're a trader and you went long the Euro Kiwi right here on this candle. Okay. So you get you get long somewhere in here. Let's say. We'll make this one green just to signify that that's where we got in long. Solid line. So we, we went long right here, right? Well, what happens is you're you're short, or sorry, you're long here. You're, you're underwater. The trade's totally underwater until what? Until it comes up here. So when we do this retracement move, I'm like, holy crap, I can, I can just about get out of break even, so I will. So that's what happens. And that's why you'll see these uh, traders, the trader ratio, the open position ratio, which is what that number is called, it'll fluctuate as the market retraces. So when it retraces, Typically, you'll see a lot of these guys dump their positions. So that's why that comes down a bit. But as long as it did, doesn't get into the 50s or into the really low 60s, like 61 or whatever, I really want it to be somewhere between you know 64 to 69 in that area. So it's within striking distance of the 70, 70%. Does that make sense? So that's my trend indicator, and it really works well. And let me give you another one that looks really good. Right now, I want to. This is I want to share this with you. So, ninety-three percent of our traders are long Aussie Kiwi. So, what does that tell me? Well, I definitely have a, a downward bias. First of all, I need to look at the chart because occasionally you'll actually notice where the crowd is right. They're riding the trend, and it's actually trending in their direction. It's very rare. It might happen one out of ten times, or maybe one, you know, fifteen out of, of uh, out of a hundred right? One and a half out of 10 times. It doesn't happen that often, but it will happen occasionally. So let's talk about the Aussie Kiwi. So how do we set up a trade on the Aussie Kiwi? Well, what I would do, 
uh, and this is the way I'm looking at it right now, is I'm looking at this from like a, a box point of view. So I would, I would tend to uh, draw a box here. Now you could include these lows down here, or you could just say that, no, we've already established the, the edge of the box down here. And if that's the case, if you don't like, and I think in, in a lot of ways, this is probably the better box. You've got several touches on the top. You got one, two, three, four, five, six touches on the top. And you got one, two touches on the bottom, uh, depending on, you know, if you count that one or not, but I would say at least two, maybe three. And you've got a false breakout here. And now we've got a breakout here. We don't know if it's a false one. So the, the system that I would use to capture this trade would be a last kiss. So I'd look for the market to come up here and print a bearish candle right around 104.55. So this would be the spot to sell right there. And then once that bearish candle prints there, I put my sell stop below the low of that bearish candle and I'm off to the races. And what's nice about this, if you back it up, well, actually, I mean, you've actually got this low, uh, I've got my solid line going on, I don't want that. You got that one, but let me fix this up. Okay. That spot right there, that was in 2015, yeah. So that's probably the best target. When, when you get to this situation where you've got like no support resistance because it's, it's the market's at an extreme high or low. Round numbers can work. Fib extensions can work. So you could, you know, if you draw like a fib extent, uh, a, a, a fib uh, here in the box, you go, well, where, where would my fib extension be? Uh, you know, for a potential target, you might look at down here. So 103.20 would be a potential target. Or you could just go, uh, this is too going to be too close, probably. That level up there at 104, but 103.20 could work. So, um, and the, the emergency stop, by the way, goes in the middle of the box, obviously. If you've read Naked Forks, you know this, but the emergency stop goes in the middle of the box, or right around 104.88. And um, if the market does close back up inside the box, it trades over. So you don't have to wait for it to hit your stop. That's just kind of an emergency stop in case the market rockets back up into the box. So that's it. That would be a last kiss Aussie Kiwi trade based on the the trend indicator, which is basically saying, look, this market is ready to fall. It's ready to fall. It's been falling actually for since last year, but even though it's been consolidating since November, it's pretty pretty close to falling through the floor here. And you can actually make the case it's already done it. So it's the pullback really that would enable us to get in here on on the last kiss. Uh, with the last kiss rules basically so that makes sense so that that's one way to use the the uh, trend indicator there and you can go through and look like whenever I see a trending market like the Swissy is another great example the Swissy has been trending really really nicely and so the question is like is this a pullback or is this the end of the trend well let's see we'll go to the handy dandy trend indicator I'll put in my USD Swissy, and what you're going to notice is that the numbers are off the charts for the the uptrend. It's a bullish trend. We know that because 71% of our traders are short, so they're taking profit on these retrace moves because that's all they're going to get. They're just going to, if they're lucky enough to sell in here, then they've got like 38 pips to you know to, to get right or you know they've got 28 pips here or what have you whereas if you're if you're running the trend so far the trend has gone up 170 pips so they they just have these little tiny moves that they can nibble on so now uh the question is okay all right walter i get it your trend indicator is pretty strong buy 
bias for the Swissy. How do you get it? How do you know when the end of the trend is over? Well, obviously, I showed you before where you can draw those little trend lines and you wait for a trend line break. So you can go like this and you just wait. Wait for the market to close up above this trend line and then you can go long again. Or I like to use um, another way to do it really is to simply wait for uh, the the you know the the sort of the last um, bounce off the last level. So see how we actually have resistance here. Well, this is support. So you can wait for even before it breaks the trend line. It could give you a nice big bullish candle. Like a what if it gives you a trendy kangaroo tail right here? The trendy kangaroo tail hangs down below there. The head of the kangaroo is up there inside the previous candle's range. Well, that would be a pretty good sign, right? And we haven't even broken the trend line yet. Uh, and you've got, and you'll see that this happens all the time. Here you had resistance here, and the market pulled back all oh, just about, actually, just about to it right there with that little belt. And you know, a lot of times that's what that's what will happen. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. You can see here, like if you're watching the trend here, you might be thinking, oh, perfect. You know, we've sagged down here. We kind of found support right here on this these previous highs here. So we go long this trendy kangaroo tail, expecting it to easily break through these highs. It doesn't happen. It actually retraces further here, so we get stopped out. So that one wouldn't have worked out very well. But it's once it goes up again, and I don't know what the numbers were back here, but from here on, they've been in the 70s. I know that. So this is really a great looking. Um, you know, great looking uh, uptrend. And some people are going to see this candle right here and they're going to go, wow, look how bearish it is. You know, it's like a bearish kangaroo tail. It doesn't have any space. It doesn't have any, any room to the left. So I, I mean, it's, it's really no good at all to me. But, you know, the traders that are shorting the Swissy or shorting the dollar against the Swissy, I should say, they're shorting this chart. They're looking at this thinking that's the end. You know, that's it. It's definitely over. It's going to fall now. And I'm sorry, but they're going to be wrong. <laughs> they're going to be wrong because we we know the trendy the trend indicator is telling us what's going on here. The market is simply going. Now the question might come up, like people say, "All right, cool, that sounds good, Walter." But what do you do if the you know the uh, the numbers, the open position ratios, say that the market's trending in one direction, but when you look at the chart, it's just chopping around sideways, like it's going nowhere. And you could actually make the case that the Aussie Kiwi is doing that. I wouldn't say that. I would say that it's actually been trending lower and it's just simply been consolidating for a while now. And then it looks like it's ready to break out lower again. But some people say, well, well hang on. Like, you know, what if I get a chart that doesn't look like this? Well, then don't trade it. <laughs> I mean, you really need both pieces, right? So I'm still looking for naked forex setups as I always do. It's just now I have a really strong bias when those open position ratios are so unbalanced and show me that, yeah, I need to be on this side of the market, right? So that's how I use that. Are there any questions about that? Sometimes people will say things like, hey, it doesn't make sense. Like if everyone's going short the USD Swissy, then why is it going up? Well, obviously, you know, the retail traders aren't pushing the market. So the banks and the institutions, they're pushing the market. It's not, we make up like a few percentage points. I don't even know what it is now, but as retail traders, we make up a very small piece of the market. So we're not moving the market, but we are like the canary in the coal mine. If you look at what our group is doing as a whole, it's a great sign of what not to do. You know, it's like the, the, the coal miners, they throw that, that bird in the coal mine to see if the bird is going to survive or it's going to die. Well, it's the same thing with this. If we see all these traders all piling in on one side, it's a it's a really good sign that you know what? It's not time. It's 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 you know, this trend is clearly going this way and you you know, you don't want to you don't want to mess with that. So, it really is fun once you start trading this way because you get, you know, you get to use uh you know, you get to use the, the crowd. I'm going to just turn off my... I have this thing that it changes the screen, you know, at nighttime so that you don't get a lot of blue light. That blue light that you get from the screen, it kind of keeps you up. 
So it, it makes it a little bit dimmer and it makes it easier to check the charts and then go back to sleep. Anyway, so that's basically it. So we've covered how to draw support and resistance levels with the line chart. I've shared with you my uh, favorite trend indicator. We will often see at the end of these retracement moves very uh, sort of, um, you know, b very bearish looking um, here. You will get like a, a, a candle that looks like, oh no, you know, the end of the trend or whatever, but that's often not the case. Here we go. I'm actually still, I'm short the pound too as well. But so the pounds come up now. It's had this retracement. And then what has it done? It's given us a nice little bearish big shadow off this trend line. This is great. This is a great example of, you know, people were looking at this. And I was looking at this on the 12 hour chart actually, but people were looking at this move here, this move from here to here, thinking, uh oh, you know, that the downtrend's over. But now guess what? We've got this nice, lovely, bearish four hour candle looks really good like that's a very and if i weren't already short i would probably take that as well but i'm already short so i'm not going to take it yeah that looks great this was actually i think up here on the 12 hour chart there was like an acapulco looking setup over here i think that's where uh where it was it broke lower here yeah I can show that, I can share that with you if you want. So what the, the important thing to know, and I learned this from Martin Pring actually, Pring on Price Action. It's a pretty good book. What happens typically when the market uh, is making these retracement moves is it, it'll, it'll, it'll fire off a really tempting uh, candle that tells you, oh wow, the, you know, it's all over, I need to go the other way. I, I've been wrong, I'm on the wrong side of the market. When you're when you're in a trend, like here's an example right here. So let's say you were in this, you're like, wow, this this is really strong. I love the way that this is doing these bullish candles, then pausing, bullish candle, then pause, bullish candle, then pause. So I'm thinking, yes, you know, oh, we're in just a little tiny bit of a retracement here, just a small little retracement, right? <laughs> no big, no big deal. And then it does this, boom. And you think, oh. Okay, maybe we are not just flatlining here and, and maybe actually that's it, you know? It, I mean, technically that was an engulfing candle, right? The previous candle and, and we've traded lower. Maybe that's it, maybe we're gonna fall back down. In fact, we haven't even taken out this high over here. So we've actually come up against some resistance right here where we had support or, or we've come close to resistance, I guess. We had support, support, resistance. So maybe that's it, maybe that's the end of the trend. Well, of course you were wrong. That's not the end of the trend because we're gonna hit, boom, hit back up there again and break through it and keep going higher. But this this thing right here, these tricky little candles at the end of retracements are the ones that get people and these are the traps. But if you use your open position ratios to keep you in the trend, knowing that yeah, it's gonna pull back a bit, as long as it's still in the mid 60s to, to, to 70s, you know that this trend is probably going to stay intact. It's probably going to keep chug, chugging along. That's the that's the key. So we can um, are there any charts that you guys want to look at? So we've covered support and resistance with with line charts. Uh, the best trend indicator for me, the open position ratio. We talked about bear traps and bull traps. So retracements versus trends. I just want to make sure that everyone's really clear on that. So when you're in a retracement move, typically what you'll see is the candles are smaller, they're wicky, and they alternate. So let me get, um, let's, go, let's, use the, uh, let's use the yen here. Let's find some yen. yen uh, so they get wicky, so here's a retracement move right here. When you're in a trend, the retracement moves get wicky. Candles get very wicky. The closes tend to center around the middle of the candle and they often alternate between, you know, colors. And uh, and there's there can be a bear, you know, there can be a bear trap on these uptrends, the retracements during the uptrends and bull traps during the retracements during the downtrends. 
So you can you can get caught up caught out on those. You have to be very careful. But that's um, that's the daily uh, daily yen here. Let's find another trend for you. Here's another one. So once it broke out of say this high right here, right here, you see the market's broken out of that high, and then you're going okay. Bullish candles, trend candles, retracement candles, trend candles, retracement, trend, retracement, getting very wicky. And boy, that was a pretty steep retracement. That that would have shaken out a lot of traders, that one. This would have been the bull the bear trap right here. This big candle right here looks like it's the end of all upward movement. <laughs> it's over, right? That's it. And then what does it do? It rockets right back up. So there you are. That is another example. I can share with you the trades that I'm currently, oh, this is a nice trend. I can share with you the trades that I'm currently in as well. Let me shift over and give you a quick look at my two-day charts. Quickly becoming one of my favorite two-day and 12-hour charts, pretty, pretty good. It's just going to take a minute to uh, fire up. All right. So I've got um, two, well... Two that I'm watching right now, anyway. Okay, so so this this is the Aussie CAD, and uh, this is my two-day chart. And what I'm looking at here is a sell. I'm looking to sell down to ninety-one fifteen. So here's why. This is an Acapulco trade. Here's your cliff candle. Here's your diver candle. So that it clearly breaks support resistance. Clearly closes beyond support resistance. The diver comes back up and touches it. Per it wicked perfectly into that. This zone was drawn way, way, way before this little diver showed up. And then I actually said uh, earlier in the week, I said, you know what? I hope it doesn't go earlier in the week. I don't like trades that go on Friday and Monday. That's another bear trap or bull trap. You'll often see the market go really hard on a Friday or a Monday. That's usually a trap. Most of the meat of the week's move is usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You can, and don't take my word for it like anything I say or anyone else says, go back and look at the weekly candles and see for yourself. And you tell me where the, where the bulk of the move is made. It's usually Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And the little wicks on the weekly candles are usually made on Mondays and Fridays. So in this case, I'm like, all right, I'll sell if it gets lower than the lowest low. The lowest low actually is the diver candle. So that's 93.79. So eight pips lower is 93.71. When this trades at 93.71, I'll be in. A, concert, a literally tight stop would be this zone right here, right? basically the support resistance level at 94.60. And then the, the more conservative would be above the cliff candle itself all the way up here at the high at 95.22. And the target's 91.15 and a trailing exit on the other position. So it's sort of two positions there. So that's one trade. The other one I've been waiting on, I'm not convinced that this is going to happen. This was a, a drop trade off the New Zealand yen. But guess what? You know, it really, what I was hoping it would do is come up to this level and then, you know, kind of be rejected but it blew right through it. So I'm not sure what's going on here and I'll probably stay away from this one until I see for certain, like if this current over the next 10 hours, if this current two day candle ends up really wicky and, and pulls up and closes all the way down here, maybe I'll take a trade, but otherwise I'm just gonna leave that one alone. All right, let's go to the 12 hour charts, which are really quickly becoming my favorites. 12 hour charts firing up. It takes a while this these uh custom time frame things that you get 
with this in MetaTrader, it's uh, a bit crazy on the old processor, especially when you follow as many markets as I do. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. All right, so on this one, I've got a whole host of uh, uh, pair, pairs that I'm following and trades that I've got. So here's my pound trade. This was an Acapulco back here. So here's your cliff candle. Here's your diver. Um, you could have put a stop loss up above the the uh, the diver. You would have been stopped out on this spiky spiky candle right there. Uh, the more conservative one is up here above the the cliff candle, right? Either way, we're 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 flirting with support here. Looks like we might retest it and hopefully we'll break through it eventually and then make a move down to 2700, which is where my target is on that uh, bearish Acapulco. We've talked about the Aussie Kiwi. Depending on how you draw the box, you can draw the box down here or up here on like the four hour. Four hour box would look like this. 12 hour box might look like this. This certainly looks pretty bearish. The Swissy, we talked about that. Uh, really what we want to see here is a bounce, like a strong push off of 1.0050 to show that it's ready to go. The Aussie Swiss, if it hits 71.90 and prints a bearish candle, I would be pretty happy to take a sell there and target 68.90. This is again another drop trade. It's been following this trend line. It broke through the trend line. Now it's in, in the retrace mode. So we'll see what happens there. The uh, EuroCAD, um, yeah, this was another sell. I sold off this candle right here. So this is the last kiss. Here's your box. Here's the retouch up against the box. There's the bearish candle off the box. I sold off of that. And we're just kind of sitting here. It looks like we're probably going to fall through this at some stage because the longer it sits on that support, the more likely it will break through that support. Um, gold is a bit of a mess right now. Until it breaks out, I'm not going to mess with it. Oh, here's the one I was telling you about. So this was the bull trap on the 12 hour. So this is your Euro Kiwi 12 hour chart. Here's your bull trap candle. So it looked good. I was thinking, yeah. Go long, go to 72.30. I'll put my buy order up here at 68.45. Uh, put my stop loss down here below the low. But then uh, when I just double checked the numbers and everything, everyone's was piled in long. I knew that this was a fake out and that it was going to fall back below the trend line. I didn't know that it was going to happen a few hours later <laughs> after I uh, after I uh, was looking at this at the, at the Asian Open, basically. So, yep, yeah, so it fell back down. And um, again, all... That was all foreshadowed by the open position ratio. That's how we know what's likely to happen. Or at least, you know, know that you don't want to be on the other side. Like if 70 plus percent are doing something, like Aussie Kiwi, I definitely, there's no way I want to go along the Aussie Kiwi right now. Number one, it's been making lower lows and lower highs. And number two, like, it's just not... Uh, this is this is a huge bearish candle. It's a, it's a it's a it's a hint at things to come, right? All right. What are some of the other ones here? Oh, Euro Yen. Did I did I show you the Euro Yen? This is kind of the same as the CAD Yen. It's it's dropped below the trend line. This could be a drop trade, but we need to see a big bearish candle print over the next 11 hours. If that big bearish candle prints, then I I will I'll I'll probably take a sell there. Possibly the same thing on the Cadian if it makes a big bearish candle here. That could also happen. Um, the Aussie is worth mentioning just because, here I'll bring it up, just because we're in, in such a, a critical spot here. This could be uh, a downtrend. It would be really early days, and we'd need to, I'd need to see another uh, strong bearish move here with the big bearish candles like we had here. But if we saw that, then I would start to think, yeah, especially if we can get below the lowest close here, right here, that closes at 69.62. If it falls like that and it closes below 69.62, uh, I, I would be open to selling the Aussie. I think, however, if you check the numbers here, I think they're like, they're in the 50s. So it's actually not that, let's have a quick look. Oh, 65. Okay, so 65% are long. This is inching up towards 70%. So, yeah, this could be, it looks like, um, especially with what we saw in the Aussie Kiwi, the Aussie Kiwi is so strong 
Uh, they're all long, and then the Aussie as well. So this is a really good sign that maybe this is the beginning of a downtrend. Again, I will wait and see if we can get some more trend candles to confirm this. But once we get some big bearish candles here, then I'll be looking for every pullback as a reason to sell. Until the open position ratio goes bad, right? Until it gets to like, you know, 61, 62%. Are there any questions about any of this stuff? Is this all making sense? Let's see here. Just want to make sure that everyone's cool. I know there's a bit of a delay here on the uh, webinar. Hey, Al. I didn't see you there. I didn't see that you were here. How, how's it going, Al? Yep, so that's basically it. So that's the indicator, the support resistance lines, the bear traps and the bull traps, and the candle, you know, interpretation of the candles. Obviously, uh, if this is a true retracement here, we would expect that most of these candles, except for maybe the last one, they're all going to get kind of wicky here. And uh, eventually, there's going to be a huge bearish candle that punct punctures this trend line and shows us that, yeah, it is still in a downtrend. Great to see you here, Al. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, yep, so that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you another one here, the Euro Pound. I was looking, so this is another drop trade where it dropped to this trend line, pulled back, and I was waiting for it to give us a, a bearish touch here. It didn't do that, okay? It didn't do that. However, look at these candles. They're still pretty wicky. And what's maybe what's going on here is that we're just going to wait and we're going to see another bearish, big bearish candle push down. You know, that, that could be a possibility there. If we look at the euro pound, I think it's about 50-50 though. Let's see. I think last I checked it was like 55 or something. Yeah, so so it's not really expect. We wouldn't really expect much of a trend move given that. Uh, but yeah, it... So for me, what happens when I see these charts is if it doesn't do what I think it's going to do, then I just, you know, I let it go. Sometimes you have a situation where you go, well, if it does this, I'll go long. And if it does that, I'll go short. But like this one, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm bearish here. I'd love to see this happen. And on the pullback here, we need to see the big bearish candle confirm that it's going to bounce off of this. And it never happened. You kept getting these candles just slowly pull, pull a little bit higher and a little bit higher. I think, I do think eventually we're going to see the big, the big trend candle down, but at, at the moment, there's no real reason to take a trade, so I have to wait. How do you enter trades on a retracement move? What type of orders are you using? Buy, sell, sell. Great question. So let's say, for example, that we're going to sell the euro pound on this one. I don't think it's a good choice because of the, you know, the numbers, but but the but the chart looks pretty good, right? Like, um, so. Probably the Swissy would be better. Let's let's go to the Swissy. I'll give you a true example. So the way that I would do this is this. Here's the Swissy. This is one of the strongest trends we've got right now. So I don't think this is the high of the trend at all. I don't think we'll, we'll look back on, you know, two weeks from now, we look back on the Swissy and we'll say, yep. We're not going to say, yep, that candle there at 1.0092 is not the high. No way. <laughs> uh, so... And I don't think this will be the high either at 1.0098. So the way that you can, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is you can you can take the, uh, you can draw a trend line here and probably a four hour will be better. So let me just give you the four hour version. So one way to do it is to simply just just draw this trend line and wait for the market to close above it. So a buy stop, a buy stop up here, right? And as it keeps marching lower, you can move the buy stop lower, or, you know? So that would be one way. Uh, another way is just wait for the break and then put the buy stop above the break. Let's say we get a really big giant bullish candle right here. You just wait for the break of that. of that. So we get this big candle like that. You put your buy stop above that, right? That's another way to do it. Those are probably my favorite. The other more aggressive ways, let's say 
the market keeps going lower. But then down here, you get like a bullish candle, like it lower, lower, lower. And they get this bullish candle. It still hasn't broken the trend line. Well, you could put a buy stop above that bullish candle. That's probably, you know, one of the more aggressive ways to do it. But that that would also work. So and the, the, the and there's another way you can wait for the retrace and bounce off of it. I don't usually like if the market's trending like this one is, I don't usually wait for the retouch. I usually wait for the retouch on the drop trades and the reverse drop trades. So like what we were talking about on the Euro Yen, for example. So see how this one, it dropped, it bounced, bounced, looked like it was gonna maybe bounce, but it dropped. This retouch here is what, this is where I like to get in on these trades. But when the market's trending and going in one direction, I will happily just wait for the market to, you know, break the uh, break the trend line. Like here's a signal candle right here. You can put a sell stop right there. Uh, you know, the retracements can sometimes just go sideways and go flat. They don't always go against the trend. Sometimes they're sideways like this one, and like and like this one right here, right? So then in, th in this case, you could put a sell stop below the box, and you'd be triggered on this candle. So does that make sense? But typically buy stops are the, like I find buy stops are the best way to go. They, they, they keep you out of a lot of bad trades. In fact, uh, here, the great example was the one earlier today. So during the Asian session, let's say I didn't look at the, at the numbers for whatever reason and I was being stupid. I didn't look at the numbers. So I, I, I put my order in at 68.45 uh, on the Euro Kiwi. Let's say I did that, right? Well, guess what? My buy stop would have saved my hide. I have my buy stop above six, so it's sixty-eight thirty-six. So I said I'll go at sixty-eight forty-five, right? Eight pips higher. Guess what? The market never got there. It just fell, boom, without triggering my buy stop. So that would have saved me. On the four-hour chart, you'll notice we talked about this before. It wouldn't have saved you. Yeah. Yeah, the boxes are awesome. That's like uh, Nicholas Darvis. So Nicholas Darvis book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. He talks about these boxes, and that's what he basically traded. I, I like all, all things being equal, if I were given a choice between a trend with um, low volatility retracements or a trend with high volatility retracements, I like the trend with the low volatility retracements because that often means it's either slightly going against a trend or it's just giving you a nice little box like this. This is a retracement right here. This is just a you know flat line. Here's another one. It does it again. Boom, right here, right? That's the way to go. Yeah. And then now you go, well, maybe we're still in the, you know, uh, in that case, maybe you see this candle, you go, well, it's broken the trend line. So you put your sell stop down here. Guess what? You're never triggered and it hops right back above the trend line. So that's a red flag. If the market hops right back above the trend line, that's a red flag, right? Like, okay, that retracement's obviously not over. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot for spending time here, Al. Great to see you, uh, Albert and Craig and Isom and Oscar. Thanks, guys, for all your time. I wish you very happy trading, Adam. And we'll see you at the next webinar. Happy trading. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. See ya.